Hello. Welcome to Renee and Cancerland. Thank you so much for continuing to join me in this new venture of me physically telling the story versus blogging about it. I feel like there's so much more emotion that I get out of it and I hope that you experience from it as well. Today I'm going to tell you about my diagnosis with stage 4 breast cancer and two things up front. Sorry if I have to look at my notes because I seem to forget a lot of chronological order. And two, I'm sure you can notice that I sound kind of eh. The allergies here in Austin are crazy. And we were outside all day yesterday because we bought a blow up paddleboard. <clears throat> Excuse me. Which is completely awesome. And we, being my husband, myself, and my son, took one of Ian's friends out with us and we were on the lake for quite a bit yesterday but being outside stirs up my allergies so you know take the good with the bad so stage four breast cancer diagnosis it was 2011 in March and they had called they being my oncologist office called and said I was due for a follow-up CT and bone scan, which my insurance had been denying for the past like five months, but they finally approved it. So they were calling me to tell me I had been approved. So to make an appointment and get that done ASAP, just cause they like to have it done close to the yearly mark as possible. I called and there was an opening the very next day for both bone and CT. So I was there to do that. And then the following day at nine o'clock in the morning, I will never forget this, I see my oncologist office calling and I'm thinking, oh, okay, cool. And as soon as I heard the nurse's voice say, Renee, you need to come see Dr. H this afternoon. I flipped out because for scan results, Here's a little note. For scan results, if it's good, they tell you over the phone. They're like, yeah, everything looks great. You know, we'll call you in X amount of months or here's your follow-up date. But if they're not good, they want you to come in. So them telling me that she wanted to see me that afternoon, I knew was serious because She's always booked up and knowing that she made space for me in the afternoon, I was not happy about. So we, Eric and I went in and she told us, she was like, I'm so sorry, but it's now stage four cancer. It has spread to your bones and your lungs. Ugh. I was devastated. And honestly, I didn't even know really much about stage four cancer because in my mind, I was done. Uh, you know, I had done the whole stage one and I was clean and clear. And the why would I need to think about any other stages? I did my time. I was done. So, <clears throat> excuse me I just zoned out everything from then on sounded like Charlie Brown and then she started wanting to talk about statistics 
and I told her and Eric, I said, you two can talk about statistics. I said, I am not a statistic and I don't want to listen to this. So I walked out of the room and her and Eric continued their conversation and come to find out that I had a life expectancy of less than two years. But um, again, I wasn't gonna sit in there and hear that because I didn't care what the statistics said. I have always said, I am my own body, I am not a stat. So I urge all of you out there who are looking at statistics to say that too. Like, yeah, it's a statistic, but it doesn't mean it applies to you. Just know that in your heart and go with that. Back to my story. Um, my first chemo that I was on worked for the first six weeks because the CT had showed shrinkage in the tumor. But then the following six weeks of that, it grew. So it was like, okay, scrap that chemo, move on to a new chemo. And that is when I got on my Inapart trial, which Eric was so excited about because he had been reading so much about the PARPs. And so I was on a trial, my Inapart trial, plus a chemo combo of Gemzar and Taxotir, I think, maybe not, probably not, um, but it was Gemzar. And then my first scan, six weeks after starting that combo, showed no evidence of disease in my body which everybody was floored and just knew that there had to be a misreading in the scans because, or a false positive, sorry, not a misreading of the scans, a false positive. So we continued on with this new triple combo and scanned again in eight weeks Lo and behold, I was still no evidence of disease, but nobody could explain it because, you know, this was not normal. So I stayed on that combo for another six months until the chemo just wiped me out. Like I had no white counts, I had no red counts, and I was not recovering. So Dr. H got permission from the PARP trial for me to just be on PARP, which had never been done before because nobody knew what the PARP was doing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Exactly. So I was able to stay on just the PARP for an additional eight months. And continuing those eight months, I was feeling great. Like, not on chemo, I feel great. And my scans were still coming up clean. Until, let me see, when did I have my what June no sorry September of 13 again sorry September of 12 I had my first seizure and we went straight to the hospital and I had a head MRI where it showed a mass about the size of let's see what is that like maybe a tennis ball was kind of what they compared it to so way too big to radiate and i was signed up for my first brain surgery in about five days after they found it the first brain surgery went well it was weird i 
like three to four weeks after brain surgery, I kept telling Eric and my doctors, I'm like, I don't feel like it's gone. Like there's something not right. And everybody kept assuring me there's no way it could grow back. It's probably radiation effects. Um, I was on steroids still, just a bunch of stuff. And then I eventually went into the hospital for steroid psychosis because I had reached my limit. Like I just couldn't take it anymore. I pretty much went crazy and I just needed some nice, quiet away from everything. Um, although at the end of that stay, I was still persistent on there being a tumor back and they did one more MRI before I left the hospital and guess who was right? Um, the tumor, same spot, had started to grow back. So another brain surgery for me about, that was in December, so three and a half months later. That one was easier to recover from mentally, except for the fact physically the second surgery had left my right leg and arm numb. It wasn't unusable, but it was numb. It was like it was asleep. You know, when your foot's asleep and you can't feel like where you're putting your heel down, that's where, that's how I felt all the time. So um, I rehabbed, I still couldn't feel where I was putting my foot down, but I learned to walk again. And things were clicking away, doing great until May of 13. So that would be like eight and a half, nine months later from my first brain surgery. I felt funny one day and I called Dr. H and I said, I feel the exact same symptoms and she said, go to the ER, went to the ER, and it was the same ER doctor, poor dude. I think he remembered us from the first time and he was just, he came in devastated and he was like, I hate to tell you this. And Eric and I knew, we were like, okay, you know, let's sign up, let's figure out when surgery's gonna be. Surgery was, again, like five days later, but this time when I woke up from surgery, I said, we're good, it's out, I'm done. And I knew then that my brain tumor was gone. And lo and behold, that was in 2013, and now is 2017 which is crazy. So now I have been cancer free in my body for five and a half years and in my head for three and a half, four years. So this is my story of hope for y'all. It has been a crazy roller coaster ride. I still have more to add to it, but that will come next week. And I just want you all to hold on to this crazy story of mine. And there are other crazy stories and just hold tight to hope because I believe my hope has gotten me through a lot. And I'm not saying that if your story is different and you didn't have as much hope as I did, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying there's always something to find hope in. But I hope you all have a wonderful week and I hope I don't sound like this next week. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.